Hi, this is my prediction for the fight on Friday the 15th of March between John McDermott and Matt Skelton. I didn't even know this fight was going ahead until uh, two seconds ago when I was on Boxerec and having a look at upcoming fights, and uh, I found this fight, which I think is a gem of a fight. Um, like I said, I didn't know it had been signed. I hadn't read about it on any website, and I check every boxing website every single day, so um, the fact it got past me is strange. Um, but this is a really good fight. Um, really well matched. Uh, the sort of fight which um, the sort of fight which uh, represents Britain, um, which has, let's face it, the best heavyweight scene in the world right now. We have all the best um, heavyweight action, not the best heavyweights or the best um, biggest heavyweight fights, but the best heavyweight action. There's a difference. Um, another great fight for the British heavyweight scene. Matt Skelton, as we all know, has accomplished a lot in his career. You know, British titles, Commonwealth, and this, that, and the other, um, mainly quite a few years back. And John McDermott, he's had a recent resurgence um, from his controversial split decision. Was it a split decision loss to Tyson Fury back about three or four years ago? Then he had um, wins over guys like Larry Olabamuo, who he stopped in one round, even though, you know, just by looking at Larry Olabamuo, you had to think he was going to destroy him. Um, so he's had a bit of a resurgence, and so has Matt Skelton. In in the last year or so, he's knocked out guys like Tom Dallas. Some people might say he's a bit overrated. Overrated or not, he was a prospect at one point. Um, Matt Skelton has a knockout victory over him. Uh, he even, people slagged the fight off, but he even gave David Price a bit of a fight, albeit only for five minutes. Five minutes and then he got knocked out. But he actually did something which none of the other guys in the previous sort of four or five fights had managed to do and that was back David Price up, back him up onto the ropes and sort of clobber him around a bit. Um, something which Sexton and McDermott and all that barely managed to do. So it's a tough fight to call. I, I don't I don't know who I think is going to win. I think that Matt Skelton will probably be the favourite and that's who I think is going to win. That's who I'm predicting anyway. But it's a really close fight. It should be a bit of a, a brawl, a little bit of a brawl. Um, McDermott came in at a career-high weight against um, David Price of something like about 270 pounds, and he came into his last fight at about 244. So I'd expect him to come in at about 250 for his fight with Matt Skelton, uh, because Matt Skelton is also quite tall. Uh, this is something that I think a lot of people forget. Um, the other day, for example, Tony Thompson came in at a career-high weight against David Price. Um, and also, if you recall, somebody like... Um, did Derek Chisora come in at a career-high against Vitaly Klitschko? I think he might have. But um, the actual um, example I was going to give was uh, Danny Williams coming in at a career-high against Vitaly Klitschko. So we've got Williams against Klitschko, we've got Thompson against Price, and we've got McDermott against Price, and maybe even Chisora against Vitaly Klitschko. What a lot of people forget is that when these smaller fighters put on the pounds, they're not putting on the pounds, at least this is the official reason, this is the reason that they would give. They're not putting on the pounds because they haven't bothered training. They're not putting on the pounds because they're naturally fatties, although, you know, some of them are quite overweight. And they're not putting on the pounds because, um, you know, they just haven't made an effort. They're putting on the pounds because apparently um, they use that extra weight to uh, push the bigger, taller fighter back into the ropes. In other words, the more weight you have, the more difficult it is to jab you away, the more difficult it is to push you away when you're on top of them, the more difficult it is to do those things, the more stamina stamina you use. Like I remember Danny Williams when he fought Vitaly Klitschko, he actually made that very point. He said, um, you know, I'm coming in at a career high because then I can use my weight. He said, this is what we're hoping to happen. We're hoping that we can use um, this weight to push Vitaly Klitschko back and, you know, wear him out on the ropes. So when guys like John McDermott come in at a career um, highest. They're not coming in at a career highest because they haven't trained. They're doing it because they think and their trainers think that it will give them an, one sort of, not an advantage because, you know, it isn't really an advantage, but is giving them some sort of hope of winning because otherwise they're not going to win anyway. So they, they've got to try something. So anyway, 
that explains why John McDermott came in a bit overweight against David Price. Like I said, that's that's the reason I think he would give. Um, and I think he might try to do the same against Matt Skelton because he's also quite tall. Matt Skelton tends to keep himself in shape under the sort of 245 pound limit. That's sort of around the weight that he fights at. So I think that uh, Matt Skelton starts his favourite. I think that McDermott might try to put on the weight and might try to um, weigh him down and back him up against the ropes. But I think eventually Matt Skelton will get a stoppage. Um, I can see it going the distance, but I think he gets a stoppage.